Okay, so Forge is installed. Next step is to get your base mods installed. Now, know which mods you're going to be installing and read the description, read the installation instructions, read everything on the page that you can. That way you'll know exactly what you're doing when you install it. Now, there is a mod that I think I feel is very important. Now, if you don't you don't have to have it, but I feel it will help you in the future. It is called the ID resolver. Okay, right now I'm about to show you uh, the, what ID resolvers are, or ID conflicts are and what they mean. Uh, first off, you need to understand that all items and blocks have something called IDs in Minecraft. Each ID is given to a specific block and each block that tells the game, I guess if it's a block that is generated in the world, how to generate it, where to generate it, that kind of stuff. If it's a block that you make, it'll tell the game like like pretty much what the block is. It's the ID. It is the identification of that block. Without that number, the game will not know what block that is. Now when you have ID conflicts, what happens is two blocks or two items can uh, have the same ID, which means uh, copper and, let's see, the copper is 1572 and the nuke is 1601. That's just how I set it up, thanks to ID resolver. But let's say both the nuke and the copper ore were both, both labeled 1572 originally in the config. Well, what happened is your uh, <laughs> game will crash. When your game crashes because of an ID conflict, you will not be able to start up the game until you get that resolved. Now, uh, same thing can happen with items. A screwdriver is 1279 and the Exomite axe is 418. Let's say the screwdriver and the axe were both labeled 418 originally, then the game would crash. Uh, that you get black screen or and then an error screen will pop up. Again, the mod that I used to resolve that, I used to actually have to do this by hand in the 1.1 version, I believe. I had to actually uh, do all this by hand, but ID Resolver fixes this. You see, you're able to go into certain mods configs and change around IDs and give it empty slots in this game. I uh, see like, let's like all these IDs, there's I forget how many open IDs there are in Minecraft. I think it stops after two something for blocks, and then after that it goes like into thousands of, for items. But with the ID resolve, or is it Forge? Or I, either Forge or ID Resolver adds uh, where you could add a bunch more blocks and stuff. It mods the game, of course. But what ID Resolver does, it finds an open ID, and if there is an overlapping or ID conflict, it will take one of those block IDs and change it to something else while keeping the block the same. So uh, if these two were overlapping, like both were 1572, then ID Resolver will give Nuke uh, the 1601 slot. So that's how that works, and same with these. So that's how the ID Resolver works. Now there is a problem when using ID Resolver. What can happen is if you decide to update to the next version of Minecraft, which current version is 1.5.2, uh, this this is recorded way after I did the tutorial. What happens is all your blocks may change unless you use the same configs, because ID Resolver doesn't always give the same ID to the same block each time. Like currently, Copper Wars 1572 that might not what have could have been originally whatever industrial craft or whatever mod added that uh, might not have been what its original ID was so it might give it something else which would mean whatever took its place in the world instead of having copper ore you could have nukes lying around underground and if a creeper blows up well right next to one of those nukes you have a nuclear explosion that will cause a lot of damage and that is a problem with using ID resolver but the way around this is to copy the configs of ID Resolver and put it into the new version of mine. What happened? Okay, hey, there's things everywhere. But yeah, so uh, you copy it into the config folder or whatever. So that is something uh, that is a problem with the ID Resolver. There's, I don't think there's really a fix because you just the fix is to copy the config. Otherwise, uh, you will have problems that I just said. So you don't want nukes lying around everywhere. That was my problem when I first started up uh, to the one, my first upgrade. I was like. I went into the world and I noticed like a bunch of IDs and blocks were changed. Some of them were like gray blocks which weren't really assigned to anything. It's just like a temporary overlay and some things were like 
industrial craft ores were changed into some random block that didn't make any sense. So that is one problem with ID Resolver. The other one is it could also make your game kind of unstable. If you're not careful, uh, it may cause some unstableness in certain mods, and it could cause your game to crash quite a bit. I haven't had that problem yet, but it could happen, so be wary. Also, it's not all mods work with ID Resolver, at least in the 1.4.7. I know the original version, the version of the archaeology mod I have did not work with ID Resolver, neither did the Jammies Furniture mod. Both those mods I had to manually go into the configs and change the IDs. But other than that, most mods currently do work with this. It's just uh, not all do. I'm sure in the 1.5 version, most mods have most mod authors have probably switched over to where it will work for this. And uh, that's about it. So let's get back to the tutorial how uh, how we install the ID resolver and stuff. Now for this mod, which I do not have the link up. Oh, we'll do it later. But okay, well I'll deal with that in a second. But okay, another mod that I suggest you'll need is single player commands. This will allow you to like just test different things. So uh, single player commands. Hold on. Okay, just had to pull out some more things. Okay, so I was going to show you ID Resolver. Okay, so ID Resolver requires two things. It, like I said, always make sure you read the page. This is the ID Resolver, Resolver page. Um, it says 1.4.6, but most mods in 1.4.6 is still supported for, by 1.4.7. Okay, so this mod is... Okay, re required mods. Make sure you look for that somewhere on the page. It requires Minecraft Forge and GUI API. Now this will, uh, you click on the link and it will send you to the page to download GUI API. Uh, make sure you just scroll down, read through all, read through the page and everything, and I do not believe there's actually installation instructions on this page. Oh, wait, no, there is, okay. Okay, now, once you have downloaded uh, ID Resolver, which I put here, uh, you will need to go into your .minecraft folder, which is percent app data percent, and run Minecraft, okay, you'll find a folder, new folders that Forge put in called Core Mods. Okay, so first things first, GUI API goes into the Core Mods folder uh, as well as ID Resolver, so you put Core Mod, uh, GUI API in there and ID Resolver in there. Okay, they're both in there. Now run Minecraft. Now this will do its thing. Boom! You see five mods loaded. Go to Mods. It shows d -d -d those three, GUI, API, and ID Resolver. Now, Options, then double check, you go to Options, Global Mod, and then there's the ID Resolver. This will show you everything. Okay, so ID Resolver is successfully installed. 